a very good morning to all of you present here we welcome all our participants today who has joined across the globe to flag flag off this incredible international virtual conference i along with my co-hosts are glad to welcome you to this event the world is full of diamonds and gems and we are having some of them here with us today to build this event i would like to call upon dr c i rajesh to welcome the gathering good morning to all present over here in this online conference an international conference on uh, language humanities social sciences and education all professor guests resource person technical chairs and our chancellor very good morning on behalf of lavender literary club i welcome you all first of all Malaysia. I hope you are going to enlighten us with your with your presentation. and based on your experience you know that you are an eminent person and vibrant personality i welcome you sir next it's my pleasure to welcome all the chief patrons who are present over here first i would like to welcome professor dr balakrishnan parashiraman university of malaysia welcome you sir you are part of us and i welcome you on behalf of all of them and i would like to welcome abdul dr abdul gafur from state islamic institute madura indonesia i welcome you sir then it's my privilege to welcome dr andy asifan from university of indonesia i welcome you and dr mutin mutinay from university al asiar mandir indonesia i welcome you and then i would like to welcome all the patrons of this uh, day dr frank jason dr regin silvester dr ruben silvester i welcome you all of you and next it's my duty to welcome the president of the day dr ganeshan from malaysia he is a key person who has organized this function and he has brought us to this day i welcome you sir and moreover i would like to welcome all the resource person for all the three days resource persons and keynote speakers are really the heroes of the day i welcome each and every one on behalf of lavender club and now next i would like to welcome all the participants who of register the name and who are ready to present their papers on the technical session and also i would like to welcome all the chair persons who are going to head each nearly 16 technical sessions for the next going 3 days i welcome each and every one and i would like to welcome the mc team who are going to be vibrant who are making going to who are going to be with us and going to elite us i welcome each and every one who have gathered here welcome thank you sir for your grand welcome now i call upon dr abdul gafur state islamic institute indonesia to give the inaugural address okay thank you assalam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Um sorry is it audible? Is it audible? Yes. Yeah, okay. Can hear, can hear. Um 
Yeah, first of all, I would like to thank all um, the committee of this conference, Honorable the founder of Cape Palmaris Trust, my real brother, Prof. Dr. Regins, Honorable all resource persons, and ladies and gentlemen. I believe that all of you have well done on preparing through the conference. It is my great pleasure that you're going to have fruitful discussions, though I think today's conference is not enough. This year's conference whose um, main theme was language, humanities, social science, and education. I expected that every resource person to make a presentation on um, the theme given, which would make clear the difference in the participating countries' awareness. I wanted you to understand the difference and promote mutual understanding among the participants through the conference. I observe your excellent presentation and participants through the conference. I observe your excellent presentation and active discussion. In addition, your positive manner revealed that you have made um, careful preparation and great work for your participating in advance of your arrival in Google Meeting platform. That furthermore, I would like to thank all presenters and participants who have joined this conference from all over the world. I'm certain that every presenter has presented the application of design research and language, humanist, and also social science educations. I sincerely that um, hope that um, through your presentation and discussion, other words, all of us can contribute to solving the educational problem in our own countries, even though the contribution may be small, but it is still valuable. In this opportunity, I would like to say thanks for the founder of Cape Thomas Trash, Dr. Regin, for his valuable though to help this conference and on preparing and support this conference. Thank you for your attention, for all um, the audience. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I would now like to start with a keynote address session. It will be my great pleasure to invite Professor Dr. Balakrishnan Parasuraman, University Malaysia, Kelantan, to give a brief introduction about today's keynote speaker, Professor Emeritus Tanshri Anwar bin Ali, Chancellor of the University of Cyberjaya, Malaysia. Over to you, sir. Okay, uh, thank you to the chairperson, uh, uh, MC, today. And I would like to thanks to uh, the Honorable Dr. Rajesh uh, from Lavender and also Prof. Abdul Kapoor, eh, our colleague from Indonesia. And also Dr. Ganesan, eh, who is be the person behind the uh, chairman for this uh, International Virtual Conference on the Language, Humanity, Social Science, and Education. Um, we are very uh, much glad to have all the distinct speakers huh, in next three days, huh, from today until Saturday. And we also <coughs> invited uh, all the, uh, what do you call, uh, top speakers huh, uh, from, uh, actually from all over the world, I think people in this, uh, in this room. And I think uh, before I start introduce, uh, really thanks to the organizer, who take all the opportunity, even though we are in pandemic, uh, I see that uh, Lavender and Kamkron, uh, both of them uh, with the Malaysian Industrial Relations Association, HRI, uh, collaborate with uh, some other university from ASEAN countries. I think this is a wonderful uh, uh, academic discourse. I always say as academic discourse and activities, the link between many countries. And I see recently uh, Malaysia, India, uh, Indonesia, uh, working very closely at uh, this moment. I think this is a good start. Uh, because uh, we are also working to other other part of the world. Uh, so far, Malaysia, I think, I still agree with me, yeah, uh, that uh, we are very lack of uh, connect, connect, connectivity with the Indian scholars and academics. I think I believe that uh, India also one of the top uh, country in the world, uh, in line with uh, other country like China and Europe and America and Latin America. So I think I glad. So today our speakers, huh, actually, are also my. Mentor, eh? my my lecturer, my professor, when I was studying in the university, I'm very glad. Uh, finally, uh, I met him, and we worked in many uh, several projects in Malaysia. And I always uh, honor Tansri Anwar. Eh? So Tansri Anwar actually professor emeritus, eh? uh, and uh, he graduated with a bachelor of science economics degree from the Queen uh, University in Belfast, Northern Ireland, in 1970. Imagine 1970 that uh, Tansri was graduate in degree, yeah. During his early years as tutor, lecturer, 
UKM, he further he study and obtain his master's and PhD from the University of Leicester uh, and University of Cairns, uh, Canterbury, United Kingdom. Uh, I think Densley got most of the degree from uh, Ireland and also in the uh, United Kingdom. He has been appointed as the Chancellor of the University recently uh, by University of Cyberjaya since September 2019. Uh, he also been appointed as a member of the Board of Governors Meritus University Kuala Lumpur since 2017. Previously, he was the President uh, and Vice Chancellor of Open University Malaysia, OUM, for 12 years from 2004. And we just informed, Tansri was the invent inventor and founder, uh, founder, I can say founder, uh, to set up Open University in Malaysia. And today, you can see that uh, Open University one of the private top university, and they are actually embarking in the virtual life. Uh, what, uh, what happened now, they already started about 20, uh, 12 years back or 20 years back, they already started about this uh, uh, virtual uh, online teaching. Prior to his appointment, he was a Vice Chancellor of the University of Bangsan, Malaysia, UKM, for a period of five years, uh, 1998 to 2003. Uh, so Tansri also was uh, one of the top university in among the five top universities in Malaysia, UKM, one of them. And Tansri was one of the key person, uh, Vice Chancellor previously. Uh, when he joined UKM as a tutor in 1973, he established himself not only as economist uh, in the area of the industrial planning and human resource development, but also an academic leader. He was the first academic being posted uh, to the Ministry of Education uh, as a director of higher education. And apart from Tansri was a leader in the universities, private and uh, public, and actually, the Malaysian government at that time uh, actually uh, sec uh, make a secondment Tansri to uh, director of higher education. And Tansri make a lot of changes uh, during their time. Uh. Uh, we all know that uh, some of the higher education policy actually come from, from Tansri and the team uh, at that time. Before that, he was the Dean of Faculty Economics, UKM, uh, day after Deputy Vice Chancellor. And before joining UKM, he was Assistant Director of Ministry. So I think Tansri have a very long CV, but uh, these are the main... I think I highlighted uh, uh, just now. Uh, and we in Malaysia, we are very glad to have Tansri because Tansri is one of the humblest person ever I met in my life. With his uh, schedule, you know, top uh, busy schedule, you know, you still, or oh, even though you already graduated, but he was invited many, many uh, conferences and also by the government and also non governmental and also private sector. And we always, uh, Tansri also one of the Chairman uh, for minimum wage uh, uh, council. Uh. We not say minimum wage. We call uh, national uh, consultative uh, wage council. Uh, and I'm working under Tansri team about almost 11 years. Uh, me and Tansri and our team uh, actually uh, was a pioneer to set up minimum wage policy in the country. Still now, uh, we are working towards to make better in Malaysia. And I think uh, so far we are doing well in terms of uh, salary and so on. We are doing a lot of research. So on that particular point, I have uh, kind of, uh, you know, I have a close relationship with Tansri and I always uh, uh, make him, not only people in this room, most of your young scholars and Tansri always motivate the young one. I think that's what uh, today, I, when the moment I call Tansri, Tansri say no, actually he always say yes. And uh, along with this, our another good friend, Professor Emery Dr. Zakaria will coming on Saturday and uh, we learn a lot of things. So I think Tansri, uh, this is a, uh what they call these uh, ngos so they are working very hard to, throughout all over india they brought all the scholars uh, young scholars senior scholars to that we have close relation with malaysia maybe country uh, later maybe we can talk to the minister of higher education to have more collaboration in india especially joint research uh, joint publication or collaboration student exchange program and so on not only just uh, come as a virtual conference but we are going to do more than that and i believe uh, tansri for zakaria uh, and with Dr. Ganesan IPG, yeah, we all can work together, together with Dr. Frank. Dr. Frank, I'd like to say thank you also because the, the man behind all this, I think Dr. Frank is a friend, a young plus. So with that note, I think, Tansri, uh, sorry, I take a long time because I really appreciate your time and your effort and your ideas most important, not only for Malaysia, but the idea can be uh, learned from all of the country because Tansri have uh, branches of uh, open university everywhere in the world. And uh, that's why uh, we all here very glad to invite Tansri. Tansri, I pass uh, this to you to, to start your keynote speak for today. Tansri. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Bala. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning uh, to our friends in India. 
and good afternoon to our friends in Indonesia and Malaysia too. Uh, let me just say uh, that uh, Professor Bala has uh, uh, flattered me with all his kind words. I'm, I'm most honored actually to be invited to this uh, international conference uh, by Lavender Literary Club. And I understand uh, Dr. Frank Joyson is uh, involved in uh, contacting me uh, through Professor Bala. Uh, at the same time, I would like to thank all the distinguished guests and the participants uh, at this uh, international seminar. Uh, may I also thank uh, Dr. Ganesan, Dr. Rajesh, and Pa Abdul Ghafur uh, from uh, Indonesia. <clears throat> now, uh, I begin by saying that uh, the most important part of uh, today's conference is the ability to us to collaborate, uh, especially in times of uncertainty and challenging, challenging times as a result of COVID that has uh, uh, taken us uh, for the past uh, one and a half years uh, that uh, impact us at every level uh, of our economic activities, educational activities and all. Can I have the first, uh, the first uh, PowerPoint, please? Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think we all know uh, whether we are in the uh, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, or other parts of the world, that uh, the current COVID-19 pandemic has uh, created a lot of disruption in our uh, system, uh, not only because of the current uh, uh, trading competition between uh, the big countries, uh, the US, China, Europe and so on, but also uh, investment flows uh, between uh, our countries have been infected, uh, not only because of the lopsided uh, trade between the big countries and the smaller one developing countries like ours, but uh, the COVID-19 has certainly uh, has disrupted a lot of our activities in our countries. Now, this uh, COVID, as we all know, is unprecedented. Uh, I think during our lifetimes, the challenge for us as uh, academics, as uh, citizens of our countries, has been uh, phenomenal in the sense that it disrupts everything that we do in our normal activity and this, the, uh, so far, the impact has been going on for the past one and a half years. And each of our country, India, Indonesia, Malaysia, and our friends from other countries are suffering because of this. But more importantly, I think, the, uh, the impact on developing countries like ours is certainly uh, more because uh, of the fact that we are unprepared, we are, we are underprepared, unprepared uh, in terms of health facilities, educational delivery system, and of course, the capacity for us to respond to these challenges is certainly uh, uh, limited, uh, as we can see from what is happening during the last few months, uh, not only in Malaysia, but I noticed in India, as well as in Indonesia. So ladies and gentlemen, I think because of this, we certainly have to cope. Uh, we means the government, uh, also to me, all universities concerned, as well as uh, the private sector, have to cope with these changes. And because of this, in our uh, respective countries, economic activities are slowing down. And because of this slow down, slowing down, we, I believe, 
uh, we have a lot of years to go from if things are back to normal we still have to uh, be prepared for the next two or three years that are critical and currently as we can see uh, a lot of income generating activities are affected uh, small traders small scale industries small scale enterprises micro enterprises are really affected and because of this uh, the problem of unemployment in our countries has become increasingly critical and to me uh, because we are all from the universities uh, graduate unemployment as well i believe has been a very critical challenge for us all how do we make sure that our graduates who have uh, graduated during the last couple of years can get the relevant jobs that they are intended to now because of this uh, challenges i i believe in all our countries that are affected the there's an overstretch of our public utilities overstretching our government expenditure how the government respond to this is important because uh, we can see uh, the problem created in terms of housing apart from income uh, generation just now our health facilities because our health facilities uh, include uh, our frontliners vaccination problem and critical challenges to our uh, frontliners and of course last but not least uh, beside all other things will be our education how this has impacted the way we educate our children how we educate our undergraduate at the university level and of course as i mentioned just now the problem of getting employment for our graduates as well uh, next please now i i always believe like any other uh, society like any other nation universities and people like us uh, play an important role all over the years all over the centuries in terms of influencing our society in terms of influencing our human progress so to speak because in every sphere of our expansion of our society's development we find that uh, issues like culture language values and ethics national identity have become more uh, important and how this is impacted by the current pandemic is certainly uh, we can see it and the impact i believe won't be only for the next two or three years it could be another generation our children our grandchildren will have a difficult time in the years ahead so because of this i uh, like all of you believe that any university any academic must play an important role to influence government policies government thinking political thinking and so on and of course any university whether is in india in indonesia uh, malaysia or any of our uh, friends who are here we are also important that we play an important part in galvanizing maximizing the potential of our youth of our population because this is the critical point where we create wealth for the country so if human capital development is very weak then we have a problem in terms of generating wealth in each of our countries and of course in terms of making economic activities 
more important or more uh, rapid uh, in the years to come. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the creation of wealth, as we all know, in each of our country will depend what we do in terms of policies. But for us at the university, for us, the academic community, I tend to believe that we have an important role, uh, whether directly or indirectly, determining techn technological progress and innovation in all our industries, in all our enterprises. So it depends also, to a great extent, what we do in our universities, apart from teaching our undergraduates, our postgraduate, but also in terms of research that we do at each of our university, how it impact technology, progress, technical development, and innovation. So that, to me, is also an important uh, role of any university and all of us who are here present this afternoon. Next, please. Now, as a university, since we are all from there, I, and I, I believe you all agree with me, that there's a very strong correlation, there's a strong linkage between academic excellence, what we do at the university. Because the pursuit of academic excellence in any of our universities will have a great impact on what knowledge we generate, because all, all of us as academics have to create, have to generate the knowledge. We are all full of ideas, and the ideas can be translated for the good of the society. And it is also important for us, not only having the great mind, but how to disseminate all this thinking in terms of the development of our societies. And there's also another dimension, <coughs> which is how we utilize those knowledge, the great mind that we have in our academic community, how we not only disseminate for the good of society, but how to utilize them. Because we find that in some countries, we find that we, the, the, the academic people, the academic uh, uh, people in the campus have a lot of ideas. But sometimes, when it comes to utilization of that knowledge, it, uh, it is almost uh, negligible. So that point, to me, is very important. So apart from, as I said, indicated earlier, uh, our role in terms of every sphere of our economic development, whether it's sectoral, whether it's regional development, interstate development, we must also see that how we impact the society's social and political advancement. Because these are all ideas. Uh, in terms of social and political advancement, it's all ideas what we think about the society, what we can develop as initiative for our society, what we think about the political institution that we have in our country, how we can influence them. So similarly, ladies and gentlemen, it's not only to me the technology that we can disseminate or be utilized and the innovation that we see as physical things in engineering or in the sciences, but there are, there are lots of ideas, a lot of thinking done at the university which have an impact on our culture in any country, on the language that we have, how to promote our language, 
or to enhance our language. And of course, uh, more importantly, also our identity, our national identity, how we react to the international development uh, that are with us, and also the values that we have, the ethics that we have, the harmony that we can uh, uh, impart, the, the good values that we can impart to society. So this is where, ladies and gentlemen, I think I must, I must congratulate the uh, sponsors of this international conference. The way I see things uh, that we are going to discuss for the next three days, it has a lot of impact on the language, the amenities, humanities, social sciences, and education. So these are areas sometimes the technologists, the scientists forget that we have this to also complement what we have in terms of science and technological development. So, so I must say, the test for us, the real test for us, the real challenge for us is all our universities and all our academic community can rise to the current challenges, the post-COVID. What, what are we going to do during the next three years, four years, five years, or even one generation across? And this is important because we have, I only maintain our importance is due to our ability to be relevant all the time, all the time. Doesn't matter when, but university academics has to be relevant. And that relevance is measured by how excellent we are at the university level, how excellent our knowledge is, how excellent we link our knowledge and generation of knowledge to the society. And of course, equally important, I think we as academic, the academic community must accept these changes. We must see that changes are happening around us. We cannot be uh, saying that everything is okay and uh, we use uh, textbooks and references which are already 20 years, uh, you know. Uh, we must be updated in our knowledge. This is a real challenge. And to me, through my experience, in universities like everybody else, whether in India, in Indonesia, or in Malaysia, the, the, the more uh, senior people, the professors, the, uh, the people like me, for instance, <laughs> because I'm over 70 already, should play a role as a role model, should, should guide the young academic. This is where I think a part of our giving back to society. If people like us, we have been, have a lot of knowledge, have experience, do not link with the younger academic, then we have lost uh, the test, so to speak. I think we must remember the importance of people like us be uh, linked to the younger generation of academic. Because whatever we do, uh, they must be guided in, in many ways as well. Because our experience is also a guide to them. What we do to the best of ability will be a guide to them for the next many, many years. And it has an impact on the younger generation of our academics. Uh, next one, please. Now, while there are so many areas that we must deal in terms of being relevant, as I said just now, and we academic must change according to the needs of the time, I, I believe that one of the most important things is what do we see in the 
expectation of our stakeholders. Because there are, there are many stakeholders. But let me just say uh, two things. One is the society that we're dealing with, whether we are in India, uh, in Indonesia, or in Malaysia, we're dealing with our society at home. We have no choice. We, we cannot be, uh, you know, separate from them. And in terms of uh, our university, is our student community. It's a very important link. And these, to me, are important stakeholders of ours. Uh, but of course, we can see other things as well. Stakeholders can also mean the whole academic community. But let me just stick to two of these. Now, I think what we, I mentioned earlier, the, the, the quality, the, uh, the knowledge that we transmit to society will depend very much to a great extent as the academic scholarship that we have in every university. This scholarship that we do, being scholars, we have to do research, we have to publish our knowledge, as I said earlier, and how important it is to be utilized and galvanized by each our society. And to me, whether we like it or not, or maybe uh, I'm biased because I'm also from social sciences, economics, but studies in humanities as reflected in the uh, objective of this conference and social sciences, they are multidisciplinary and multidimensional. We can, we can actually imagine so many things that we can do together as an academic community in any uh, university or through collaboration with other universities. Because to me, uh, studies in humanities and social sciences have a great influence on policy making, on the, how the government think, what is the best policy to help our society. Because these policies must, to me, be guided also by, acad by the academia. Because as we can see the experience of many countries, we cannot depend too much on the politician alone. We must work together. They must understand that academia can provide if us good opinion, good viewpoint, and so on. Secondly, what we do what we study in humanities and social sciences will also be reflected in good governance. Good governance means not only the way we govern ourselves in the faculty, in the university, in the campus, how we deal with uh, the challenges that we do every day uh, by the top management of the university, how we link with the Ministry of Education or the Ministry of Education also reflect good governance. And good governance will determine the way to move forward. And of course, in terms of the country, in terms of the nation, institutions are important. Institution, whether is to help economic growth, institution that help the law and order in terms of developing the schools. These are all institutions and they must be done properly. And of course, uh, the last I, system building, meaning system mean within each institution, what are the best thing, best practices that we can do? For example, how do we relate now the teaching, the delivery of teaching and learning for a student 
during because of the COVID. So that's to me is a building of the system within each of the institution. And it's not easy because sometimes we are drawn back because of our culture, because of values. Systems don't match with what we expect in the country. So as scholars, as academic, we have to think through all this. But of course, in any country, for that matter, we also have to deal with the, what is happening on the ground. Because if we look in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in uh, India, and many developing countries, we are, we are concerned. I think the academic should be concerned with income disparities, income inequalities. We see uh, there's so much uh, different within the lives of the well-to-do, of the privileged classes as compared to the majority of the people who, are, who have difficulties in ha having a healthy livelihood. Now, there are also con concerns about regional imbalances. For Malaysia, instant, for instance, the peninsula Malaysia, and uh, Sabah and Sarawak, which are in East, East Malaysia. So all this have to be uh, looked properly. And I think as academic, we play an important role. And also, of course, uh, as I said earlier, the current COVID, uh, COVID uh, pandemic that has an impact on our job opportunities, increasing unemployment, uh, youth uh, expectation, uh, graduate, and so on. So, ladies and gentlemen, besides looking at all these things which are uh, beyond the campus, beyond the university, the studies in discipline of humanities and social sciences, which uh, this conference is looking into, we have a lot of also implication uh, that how do we do things in the university? Meaning, how do we look at the ability of the top management? In our case, the vice chancellor, deputy vice chancellor, the board of university directors, and of course the deans, the head of department. How do we enhance this role? Because to me, these are important areas that we should also consider because it has a lot of impact on the way we do in order to be excellent. So we always discuss among ourselves the question of university autonomy. How, how for instance, autonomous we are, how independent is there academic freedom and so on? So from country to country, it varies. But to me, it is also important to note that rising income level, rising development is also an important indicator of university autonomy. As, as the wealth is spread, among the population. The population's uh, income level has increased. I think, in a sense, university autonomy is, will be taken into consideration. If not, if there's problem about income disparities and so on, the politician, the ministries may want to have a hold on what we mean by autonomy or academic freedom in some countries. So internally, a university autonomy also has an important indication on the governance. That means the way we do things. We mentioned about system building. So that's part of governance. 
how we, for instance, hire uh, good potential academics. Is it done properly? Do we have the best uh, young people to come and join the universities? In some countries, yes. But in some countries, maybe not. Because the temptation of our good graduates is to go into industry, to go into government, where probably there's a better pay, better salary scheme, and so on. So it all depends how the university is looked into by our authorities, by our political masters. And internally, to me, uh, the leadership in the university is also important. Uh, you must, uh, we must get good leaders who are very focused in what they want to do. No political uh, string attached. And in some countries, we all understand why sometimes vice chancellors are not very popular with the academic staff because they are appointed by the minister. And we all, uh, academic, we know. If it's done that way, I think it does not reflect the importance of leadership at the university we must emphasize. So I think at all time, my view is you have to have the best vice chancellor, president, or whatever you call, and they have to have good values and they are very focused in terms of uh, making the university advance to a higher level. And of course, last but not least, to me, no matter what we do, the student must come first. Because a student from our university is a, is a reflection of what we do with them. If the student is certainly very good when they go out as graduates, we are always proud of them. And the society expects no less. And this is why I think if we are student-centered, we give them the best, we educate them with the best curriculum, we cannot lose to advance the needs of our society. Next, please. Uh, Prof. Bala, I have time. Uh. Prof. Still got time. Uh. Prof. Prof. Bala. Anyway, I'll go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah you still got uh, time. Okay, time. okay. okay. I'll, uh -huh. I'll go to the next, uh, please. Uh, yes. Now, uh, I think to me, I think we should also be uh, aware. Can, can the uh, PowerPoint be slightly bigger? Yes, thank you so much. Now, we, we must also understand the forces that uh, are linked with academic wanting or universities wanting to advance the uh, discipline in social sciences humanities and so on because there are forces that actually uh, are not in favor of what we want to do at universities particularly those who are in the social sciences or humanities uh, as i can note there the market forces that we have the liberalization of uh, government policies uh, in each of our country uh, because the market is seen or the private sector is seen to be the best to uh, guide us through with our economic development, market competition. And because of this, uh, the academic world is also in a state of flux in the sense that there, there's some uncertainty because uh, as we know, public university funding, if we are from the, uh, we are public universities, uh, public university funding uh, has become uh, relatively limited. 
because government resources have to be spent on uh, somewhere else. They have to go to the, uh, uh, for instance, to the faster growing uh, uh, sectors of the uh, country or the nation. Uh, the uh, activities are not necessarily pro-academic. So because of that, uh, discipline in social sciences and some in some social sciences and many things may be infected. And because of this, through my experience uh, at the university level, the, uh, uh, the, the operation, the management of every uh, university of ours, particularly the public universities, will be impacted. And because of this, also at the same time, I uh, we we can notice that students' preferences that are sometimes or most of the time guided by their parents or what they see in society, they tend to concentrate on marketable academic program. That means program that uh, will guarantee them a good job uh, when they graduate. So I think while this is so. Uh, we do observe, of course, subject to our discussion during the next two days, uh, the, the, the importance of uh, discipline like history, philosophy, languages, literature, politics, religion, and courses like anthropology has become uh, diminished in a sense uh, because it's difficult to get students. But obviously, as a university, we, we, these subjects, this discipline are very, very important. So to me, if uh, you know, we have a change of thinking in the sense that in universities that are public, like where I was, University of Bangsa and Malaysia, the government funding can be uh, done in a very cross-subsidized manner, in the sense that subject that are important to the nation, important to society development, have to be uh, subsidized. There's no choice about that. Because to me, all these subjects that I mentioned, are very important to our society development. And of course, one must remember that education, whether it is in the school level, higher education, or lifelong learning, are a public good in the sense that it has to be supported all the time by public funding. This is why in some countries we have uh, free education up to university level. There are some countries. But once you start charging uh, the student fees, you, you increase student fees at public universities, then the uh, accessibility of students who are poor, who come from poor families, may not be as open as before. So these, is, these are important to me, besides the fact that these discipline are to me drivers, they are the catalyst for future society development, whether we're in India, in Indonesia or in Malaysia. So that's important for us to be reminded. Next, please. Now, uh, Prof. Bala has given me some time. I, I, I still think that there are many opportunities that we can move forward as a university or as a, the academic community for the whole region or for all developing countries. Because what we can do 
to me these are my simple suggestion there must be a strategic thinking to enhance this interdisciplinary research at every university because there's no there's no uh, choice but we have to enhance uh, research and studies in social science and humanities like we do in this conference and of course we have to realign some of the some of the areas that we must cover for instance uh, because of the pandemic what are the areas that is important to the public to the community now it might have changed from the last two years so this i think like to me uh, for for example health facilities health opportunities the improvement of health utilities important uh, medical services and so on and housing uh, employment these are areas that may need a lot of attention in the years to come secondly i i believe to move forward we must have an efficient uh, delivery system how are universities uh, ready to have an efficient delivery system this uh, depends not only for public universities as well as uh, private universities how the university management think about this because to me as we can see clearly that the old style of teaching in the classroom has to change and i think to me one of the thing that has been uh, said uh, by professor bala just now is the question of uh, blended learning i think it was implying that a change needs to be done and blended learning is one of them and to me when i was at the i was fortunate enough to lead open university malaysia we started in uh, earnest to have uh, this blended learning approach where there's face to face as well as online learning since 2006 so that's that shows how and i think when the pandemic comes to uh, one and a half years ago uh, open university malaysia was ready so i think that part the current universities the traditional universities the campus universities have to rethink of best this is to be done otherwise we uh, we think that the student will be left out they'll be uh, you know uh, they be uh, at the end of the day uh, they cannot uh, had a good system to deliver for them and this is happening in many universities because we are not ready we are not ready for blended learning uh, where we have a mix of face-to-face -face and online learning now the other point which i would like to show or to discuss among ourselves among the universities in indonesia in india in malaysia and other countries that are participating how do we do this because the students of today are more open uh, the handphone has been the device that can make them interact with anybody in the world they have facebook they have instagram and so on so it is only natural that our university think of ways how this can be done uh, as an example uh, i was glad when uh, i was in ukm we had a student that come every semester from Beijing foreign languages university to university kebangsaan malaysia to study the malay language so i think that was part of it part of the system but because of the pandemic we, we, it just stopped i think the last few years so that's 
to me is a waste. And student mobility, I'm sure we all can discuss at this conference. Now, the last point which I want to make is the importance of collaboration, not only between universities, but equally important amongst academic discipline. In this case, we promote the idea that a discipline in humanities, social sciences, why don't we, you know, among ourselves, we exchange ideas, we work together. Because, uh, but of, of course, uh, when I was uh, at uh, Open University of Malaysia, it was easier because of the fact that we collaborate with the uh, Open Universities of ASEAN. Uh, we have, for instance, Universitas Terbuka Indonesia, which is, uh, I think, Bapa <laughs> from Indonesia should know, uh, Open University of Indonesia. We have uh, Sokotai Tamasirat Open University of Thailand, the University of Philippines Open University, and Hanoi Open University, where we collaborate. Uh, we collaborate on ideas like blended learning. We do research on student attrition, how students learn in our respective universities. So I think those are ideas that are actually simple, but sometimes when it comes to implementation, uh, you need the drive. Of course, you need the discipline, not only the drive, but also the funding. This is where we sometimes, uh, I think, feel uh, limited in our move. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's go to the last point which I want to make. Uh, the, the last... Uh, the, ah, okay. Now, I think the message that uh, we want to learn, or rather we want to hear, is the fact that it is important to learn from each other. Uh, we not only learn from other universities, from our own country, but equally important uh, from other countries. And I think the very idea of having this international conference is uh, lauded, is, uh, is very good. And secondly, we exchange our experiences uh, through benchmarking and what are the best practices in each of our universities that can contribute to the development of the whole university, our own university. And as uh, uh, Prof. Uh, Bala was mentioning, uh, when I was in UKM, uh, sorry, when I was at OUM, Open University, uh, we had many OUM centers in other countries, uh, particularly uh, in Sri Lanka, around this area, in the Maldives, uh, in Yemen, in Bahrain, and we went as far as Hungary to have our centers because they look at our program as something useful for their students. And last but not least, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in any university, whether it's Indonesia, Malaysia, or India, the importance of leadership is very important. The vice chancellor, the esteem of deputy vice chancellors are people who should be able to drive the university together to play as a team. And to me, that is an important message uh, for us all. So with that note, let me once again thank the organizers for this beautiful, uh, wonderful uh, experience uh, for me. Thank you so much. And I hope I've given you some thoughts uh, for the next uh, couple of days. Thank you so much, Prabhala. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Tansri, can you hear me? Oh, can yes, I? yes, definitely. Okay. All right, uh, we have uh, 10 minutes. Uh, so before I pass to MC, uh, anybody can ask question now. You can turn on your mic and you ask Tansri because uh, to get Tansri again, I think it's very difficult because it's a very busy schedule and this opportunity. Can I open uh, uh, somebody raise hand? I think Maria, Maria, can you turn on your, 
your mic. Ask question direct to Tansri. Yes. Okay. Okay, Maria. Maria, uh, Maria can from, I? Can Dr. I hear Maria. you? Doctor Maria. Doctor uh, Maria is from where? Uh, can I hear? I think. Hello, Doctor Maria. Can we? Can I hear you? Maria, by by you. Yeah. Or, or else you can put the, your question in the chat box. Mm. She hasn't uh, turned on her. Yeah, but Michael. she only turned on the uh, microphone. microphone. She's yeah, from where? Microphone. She's from where? Not, not sure. <laughs> There's no info on the, on the screen. Maybe we we come back to her again. Uh, yeah, yeah, come back again. Okay, okay. Uh, maybe other any other uh, person that you like to ask questions. If you feel that uh, you put the chat box, anyone. Maria is trying her best, but uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, good through. Huh? Yeah, yeah, maybe a line problem. Uh, any uh, okay, Maria, you can put the chat box. Any other other person? Last question. She was speaking, but uh, no, no, Doctor Maria cannot cannot hear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone? If not, uh, while you're waiting, I can ask a question from Tansri. Uh, okay, Tansri. Uh, you are talking. I think uh, you make very good uh, point to that. Uh, the collaboration is very important between this uh, United region. Yes, uh, yes. What do you think about the future scenario, Tansri? Well, post, uh, post, uh, post. I mean, COVID. Uh, do you think this norm will become as a normal like? Like everybody will do like virtual conference rather than people feel like now they save cost, they don't want to take a risk, and people prefer more uh, lively to stay at home, you know. And I think it's more active at Tansri compared to previous times because yeah, yeah. more, 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 I think many uh, ac uh, online activities is going on actually every day, yeah. night, yes. and yeah. so Tansri think that it will go like that in the future. And what happened impact to the university itself? How, how the university will survive? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Bala. I think firstly, uh, I think this is a wonderful development in the sense that uh, it's a great challenge to us all as academic, where uh, we have a webinar, uh, online meeting, online discussion like today. Uh, I think it's a wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful kind of development, which uh, I think will go on. Even if uh, we go back to normal condition, like uh, two years before, uh, firstly, because it is easier to handle, it's easier to organize. Within one week, you can organize such a seminar. And it's uh, at little cost to the university. And I think the only important thing is to sustain it in the sense that uh, you 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 have to carry on doing it uh, until normal times come back. But when normal time like we did before, traveling here and there for maybe it become more expensive. Uh, this is to me an important uh, compliment. While face to face uh, face to face uh, discussion is also important. But this is an added avenue where we all can discuss ideas, viewpoint uh, with a lot of impact. And today, as we can see, uh, we have a good number of participants and hopefully we can learn from each other. So I think it, it become uh, normal uh, doing conferences online in the next years to come. Thank you, bro. Okay, Tansri, we got another question, sir, uh, yeah. from uh, Jagdev Singh. I think he's from Malaysia. I think he's so. He yes, the principal. He's our former student from you. Our my my student. I mean, my friend from USM. Yes, no, no. Oh, okay. We, have, we have studied together. I think so. Uh, yeah. Okay, students engagement. How do you retain student interest throughout the, this semester? Okay, uh, as a school principal, uh, he's a principal of the one of the oh, okay, schools no, okay, in, okay. in KL country. I'm yes. facing this problem with prolonged MCO. Thank you for sharing, uh, 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 Tansri. Okay, I mean, uh, uh, just now I mentioned about preparedness, yeah? 
uh, maybe a lot the school system uh, perhaps in Malaysia or many of the developing countries or even developed countries did not anticipate uh, COVID while uh, some countries are more advanced than others they have online classes they have uh, done fairly well but i think developing countries find it hard to to get uh, the attention of uh, political leaders to fund uh, in some countries they were already fund before but somehow the implementation didn't go the way that they wanted mr singh i think the important thing is from today or from this year one must develop a good system where uh, the schools if we are talking about the school system to engage the student of course is not 100% uh, you know you can't do this 100% all the time because student particularly young one at the school level they need face to face uh, discussion to meet each other until the time come i believe that if we have a good system my learning management system that is done uh, at the uh, uh, upon the teachers colleges or institute of teacher training uh, it can go down to the student uh, but uh, it's not easy it's not easy because uh, my experience at OUM, we, we have to do it slowly because the students will still like to come to class. They want to see the professors, they want to see their teachers. But we have to move on, we have to move on. The only thing is, how does the ministry, for instance, take this as a challenge? And we, we must be able to also get the teachers uh, engaged. I know some teachers in the school are well prepared. Uh, in fact, this morning I was watching my grandchildren. They were having classes online. I found it interesting, except that every few minutes, my grandchildren will run away to get a drink and so on, you know, because they, they, they don't uh, pay 100% attention. But Mr. Jack Dev Singh, uh, if you are in the teaching profession, you need the support of the management to do this. And of course, when I say support of the management, you need the financial support as well. So this must go together. And how far the government can fund this depends a lot on what they want to do. And I think it can be done. It can be done. The platform, the teaching platform, uh, my learning uh, management is already very advanced, very advanced. It's just adopting and adopting which is the best for the school, for the university. Uh, but for university, I, I used to tease my friends in the public school. Hey, why don't you 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 purchase our system lah? Very cheap, I said. But they just laughed. And then uh, last year when the COVID came, uh, uh, now they cannot laugh anymore. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Singh. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Jack, if you want to say something, Jack, you can say hello. Hey, Mr. To... Me, I, I think I know him. Yes, <laughs> yes. Jasper Kong, my wife. Sorry, she's here. Who? Jasper Kong, your lecturer. Oh, okay. Ah, Doctor Jasper, apa kabar? Okay, fine. Thanks, Sri. Very Hello. nice to see you. Yeah, I said the right thing about uh, OUM. <laughs> yes, I <it> did. <laughs> I was thank you, thank you. Itulah, I, I think I know this. <laughs> thank you, thank uh, you, thank uh, you. Thank you. Okay, Tansri. Uh, yeah, Jack Davis, I think we have studied together like my junior, all of them. Ah, okay. Dr. okay. The, the, the wife, uh, <laughs> Dr. Jasper, was our, oh, our, uh, our lecturer at OUM. Uh, and she was a okay. good lecturer. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay, Tansri, uh, because of time factor, you yes. done a very good job. I think you'll stop. I think not all the professor will do. 
even myself also difficult but uh, i think we try to yeah. manage, manage yeah. our time professors are the most <laughs> difficult people to handle <laughs> yeah well, okay okay tansri uh, anyway I, I i i i learn a lot this afternoon and i would like to hear for the next uh, session as well thank you so much yeah so i think most of our friends here in the room i think uh, don't be shy you can send the question to to dr frank and uh, later i'll pass the question to tansri lah maybe course, tansri can yeah. no uh, problem, no problem. so uh, i really really uh, appreciate all of you here you take your time i think we got all over uh, malaysia also tansri we got friend from sabah uh, umk and yes, also yes. friend from all thank over you, india you. i think participate i heard from pakistan middle east kenya also we have and indonesia of course our close friends and uh, i believe uh, this kind of activity will go and on and uh, and sweet frankly speaking i work from home more than uh, 20 years ago <laughs> i i more productive at home rather than any so i i feel that uh, the norm is already there you know, yes, but yes, of yes. course uh, face to face very important because yes. uh, otherwise uh, tansri always said at least 30% you have to face to face 30% can online uh, because there's uh, no touching at all like uh, like 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 we can today also can feel that you know we don't have the chat have coffee together you know like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But, but but that is a reality tansri because the the world going to be uh, like smaller and smaller uh, and now with this covid everybody connected maybe previously we don't know some university now you know every university so yes. <laughs> and uh, your conclusion tansri you said uh, that uh, we go beyond beyond the country not even we work as a uh, and i believe tansri uh, there's one uh, my mentor professor luis apreso like uh, he passed away he is a uh, president of international employment relation based in uh, peru eh? lima mm-hmm. he always said uh, 20 years of citizen of the world uh, when i met him first time uh, citizen of the world you know we are not uh, one citizen but so that is the power of the academic and uh, all this so i think i believe yes. this kind of connection maybe uh, tansri we also can talk on the how to bring this uh, india in our counterpart in malaysia so that the the they know the minister from higher education from india and minister from here and the university can work together so i really need tansri and project support to bring this matter because otherwise tansri you will go like virtual conference rather mm-hmm. than go beyond the you know i mean it kind of like investment and so on tansri we work uh, as a cultural and uh, that's all tansri i think i believe uh, thank you very much i would like thank to thank you thank you thank you prof uh, mc again mc please Thank you, sir. So, thank you for your awareness and all the ideologies of improvement you have bestowed on us, sir. We are sure we can rise and challenge to become a better society. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.